There's this girl at work. At first, I hated her, but we started growing closer and closer together, and eventually, I had the courage to ask her out. Well, guys, it was going perfect. I was actually so happy that I made the leap because everything was going good. Until one day, I get to work and HR calls me into the office and says they have some very bad news for me. And it's all because of my girlfriend. Well, guess what? You won't believe what she told them. Hey guys, I'm 35. I'm going through something tricky and could really use some advice. I'm dealing with major issues at work and I'm just not sure about how to handle it ethically. I'm also worried that my relationship might not survive if things continue the way that they've been going without some major improvements. You know, for some background, I work as a marketing consultant in a fairly decent marketing firm. We don't exactly make madmen money around here, but we get paid pretty well for what we do. But the one thing that shows gets right about firms our size is that some people put their own ambitions way ahead of their clients' needs, and one of my co-workers, Mirabelle, is probably the most competitive out of all of them. To be entirely honest, I hated Mirabelle when she first started working there just a couple years ago. Most of our team had already been working here for years, but she was swooping in and started trying to boss everyone on around her the very first day. On top of that, she's never hidden the fact that she was gunning to become all of our bosses one day. And while it still annoys me to admit this, I have to be honest, there were times when I wondered if she might make it happen. Her ideas were always good, and Mirabelle's boundless ambition made all of us at least a little bit uneasy. At first, I chalked this up to a sort of Latin fire. To be clear, I don't stereotype. She's not the first Colombian woman I've met, and I've known at least a couple who were uh, her polar opposite. But I've also met a number of South American women in general who could probably dedicate themselves to becoming stay-at-home moms and still wear the pants in the family. Through sheer unbridled passion, Mirabelle makes those other women seem borderline shy, and although there are certainly some men who find that sort of thing curiously attractive, that's never really been me. So, we started butting heads from day one and found new things to fight about every day for the first couple of months. That wasn't unique to me either. Mirabelle had so much confidence in her ideas that she would pitch them to clients even when it was clear that she was going against what they wanted. This made everyone else dislike her as well, since anyone who gets paired with her for a pitch usually ended up looking bad for uh, just by proxy. Our boss, Susie, had to lecture Mirabelle several times since her uh, disregard for the clients often made the firm look bad as well. Thankfully, Susie tends to put new hires on our most loyal accounts, so she was always able to smooth over any feathers Mirabelle managed to ruffle. Still, it didn't make her a very well-liked personality in the office, and the only person Mirabelle really got along with was Susie's secretary, Erica. And I suspect that's because Erica is pretty uh, shy of a person. Everybody likes her, but she's an especially desirable friend for someone like Mirabelle who always likes to get their way. Anyways, while I was lucky enough to avoid it for a while, Susie sat me down at one point and informed me that I'd be getting paired with Mirabelle to pitch the marketing campaign. For a new client, a raw, juicy company. Everyone has their own unique set of skills in our office, and it's uh, fairly well known that one of my big ones is being able to relate to clients. Some of them come in with very clear visions of what they want, while others are a lot more open-minded, and I work best with the ones who uh, know what they want, but don't know how to visualize it, per se, or put it into words. So, uh, Susie told me that she wanted to help Mirabelle work on this since it's been her biggest weakness thus far. We immediately clashed, and, well, Mirabelle had huge ideas, but her drawbacks is that a lot of her ideas tend to require clients to change their business models. Her idea for this client was to start marketing a new custom juice option in addition to the just juices that they'd already sell. I had to explain to her that while this was indeed a very marketable idea, our client purchases their ingredient based on their average order quantity. I mean, come on, that's not very surprising. Mirabelle took this as a challenge to her idea, and we argued to no end about it. So, I offered a compromise. We needed to prepare a more standard marketing campaign, something that matched what the client was looking for. 
However, as separate ideas, we could also pitch the idea of having a contest where the most frequent customers in a given period of time were able to win one half-priced case of juice, following their custom and all ingredient selection. Well, Mirabelle, she absolutely loved the idea. She loved it so much that we had pretty much no issues working on the campaign after that. Showing her that I respected her idea was enough to placate her, and showing her that she could offer ambitious ideas while still catering to the client's desires made her much more of an asset to the firm. Not only did the rest of her time on the project go by smoothly, but we gained a lot of mutual respect once the initial discord had been resolved. And while they never did wind up offering custom juices in the end, the client loved the idea. So much so that they straight up specifically asked Doozy for me and Mirabelle to stay on their account. And goodness knows that gaining a new regular did not hurt Susie's opinion of either one of us. Well, the clients weren't the only ones who thought Mirabelle and I were a desirable pair. Though the more often we worked together, the more we started to admire each other as more than just colleagues even. And the next time we had to pitch a new client together, Mirabelle asked me out to discuss the campaign over dinner. Well, we wound up talking about a lot more than uh, just the campaign, buddy. And let's just say it's a good thing that she asked on a Friday, or else I would have wound up coming to work in the same clothes the next day. <laughs> but when I woke up to Mirabelle cooking the most amazing breakfast I've ever had, I was pretty confident that I didn't want this to just be a one night. And thankfully, she felt the same way. So we continued dating after that, and now I know this might sound a bit crazy after nearly two years, but we've never actually called ourselves boyfriend and girlfriend. I made it very clear early on that I would like to, but Mirabelle says that she's strictly against labels. And she's just stuck to that. She's weirdly picky about it, and for instance, she had no problem inviting me over to her parents' place for dinner just to meet them and her brothers. Uh, but I've absolutely never met her friends, and I don't even technically know if she has any because she's never even mentioned them. The only friend of hers I know is Erica, but Mirabelle doesn't want anyone at the office to know where we've been seeing each other. I saw her at the elevator one day, and as we were on our way up, and tried to hug her around the waist without thinking about it, she later yelled at me because someone might have seen us. Oh, since then, I've been pretty good at keeping it a secret like she wants. The only one who seems to suspect we're dating is Susie. Well, that brings us to the core issue why I'm even posting today. Three weeks ago, Susie brought me into her office and asked if Maribelle and I were a couple. I said no. Susie didn't believe it. But more importantly than that, there was her reasoning for asking. Susie told me that the firm was shuffling its departments a bit, and one of the major changes was that they'd be merging their creator-director position with the director of accounts. Susie herself was getting promoted to chief operating officer, so that meant she needed somebody to fill the new dual position. She'd been thinking about picking either me or Mirabelle, but she knew that we'd been started with something of a competitive relationship, and that promoting one of us might cause problems. She wanted reassurance that those problems would not be worsened by any romantic entanglement. I assured her that there's nothing to worry about, but Susie again simply did not believe me. She told me very clearly that she was learning towards uh, me for the job because she thought that I would handle the responsibility just a bit better, but that I should be prepared for Mirabelle not to take it well. Again, I assured her that there was nothing to worry about, and I really believed that. Susie did not. As it turns out, Susie is a lot smarter than I am. Susie announced my promotion the following week, and things with Mirabelle have been absolute heck since then. Since I got promoted, Mirabelle's been right back to her old little ways. She's disregarding clients' wishes, she's arguing with everyone in the office, and she's been especially argumentative with me. Not uh, just at the office, either. We've only been on a couple of dates since the promotion, and not one of them was pleasant, guys. She keeps starting uh, these heated arguments over the fact that I didn't tell her about the promotion, accusing me of keeping it from her. When I try to address that I consider it to be uh, the real issue, which is that she did not get the job herself. I'm met with the silent treatment, and I've never been with anyone before who could act so fiery, yet so cold at the same time. Well, here's the problem in a nutshell. Professionally, I need to address the way she's been acting at work, her current behavior is exactly what Susie paired me with her to fix. 
and it cannot continue, but personally, I just don't want this affecting our relationship, you know. At the same time, I wonder if we should even have a relationship now that I'm her boss. Is there a way to navigate one half of the relationship without losing the other? And if so, how? Update number one. I'll be honest, I didn't really get the advice I was hoping for on my last post. Some were more supportive than others, but it seems like nobody really thought that there was a way to salvage my relationship at all, to be honest with you. Uh, so, uh, I just didn't want to stop trying. So, uh, I thought I'd give a brief update on what's been happening for the past couple of weeks. First of all, I'll admit straight off the bat that I completely disregard everybody who told me that I needed to be a boss first and a boyfriend second. I really want this relationship to work, guys. And I thought that we would stand a better chance if, I don't know... Uh, she just understood that my promotion had not changed that. So I took her to dinner and told her just that. So I explained that it was reasonable for me to get promoted before her since I just have more experience. But I also assured her that she definitely had what it takes to get promoted eventually. I also made sure she understood that I'd do everything in my power to make that happen when the time was right. All I needed from her in the meantime was to step up and show me what she's made of. She seemed to take that pretty well, and the rest of the date was tension-free. And without getting into too much detail, we spent one of the most passionate nights together, oh, that we've ever shared, and I'd really had a good feeling about it. So, the problem began next week at the office. I used to be that um, our other co-workers were the ones complaining to me about her behavior, but now she was bringing me and in all the arguments herself. She always had this triumphant grin on her face when she had a coworker approach me with a dispute like she just assumed I would take her side. But like I've said before, her side doesn't always mesh with what the client actually wants. So more often than not, I've had the side against her. And the more that happens, the more insubordinate she became. The worst of it was when I tried to solve the issue the same way Susie had. I tried putting her on a new client with, you know, Isaiah. 33 male, one of our uh, colleagues who uh, despise Maribel yet excels at the client relationship. See, it helped Maribel and I uh, gain a bit of respect for each other when Susie did it. So I thought that I could do the same thing for Maribel and Isaiah. Well, it backfired absolutely tremendously. Ugh. Up to that day of the pitch, they were still uh, pitching entirely different campaigns and I could not make them see eye to eye. The client makes skin cream for plus-sized women, and Isaiah wants to run a digital marketing campaign in partnership with a few anti-bullying charities. Maribel read a few product reviews by women who used the cream to prevent bra chafing, so she wanted to rebrand entirely around that, using skinny yet large chested models just to appear to a wider market. I mean, I understood her logic, but I also knew there was no way the client would want to do that. So, with our backs against the wall, I told them to go with Isaiah's plan. When uh, the pitch time came, Mirabelle just steamrolled over Isaiah and presented her idea anywho. The client found it deeply offensive. Rather than let Isaiah take the point, Mirabelle lectured the client on how they were being narrow-minded and that attractive women get bullied too. I mean, she's not wrong, but that's clearly not the primary issue that the client cares about. You know? So... After spending an afternoon being borderline insulted by our firm, the client walked out and we lost their business entirely. Her insubordination had been enough before, but now that her unprofessionalism was actively costing us money, I had no choice but to call her into my office and give her a formal write-up for her behavior. Let's just say she didn't take it very well. She told me I would regret it and then walked straight out of my office and out of the building completely. I haven't been able to get hold of her for the rest of the day, and I might just have lost both an employee and a girlfriend at the same time. Well, I hope not, but I really don't know what else to do right now. Update number two. Hey guys, I'm back with yet another update. I know, it's been less than a week since my last update, but somehow, uh, so much more has happened in the past few days than in the last several weeks combined. Long story short... I just got home from the hospital, and I think Maribel had something to do with it. Uh, well, the day after Maribel stormed out of my office, I wasn't sure that she'd be coming back to work. 
Not only did she return, but she seemed a lot more cheerful than I was even expecting. I didn't get a single complaint about her the entire day, rather than spending half her time arguing with the people. Maribel, she split her free time between talks with Erica and trips to the break room. Best I could figure, she probably wanted to argue, but simply found healthier ways of venting her frustration. Then, a couple of hours before quitting time, I got hit with a bombshell. Our HR rep came in and told me that Maribel had accused me of harassment. And what's more, she has evidence. I mentioned that in my last update how our relationship had gotten better when I assured her that she would get promoted one day. Oh, that's right. Well, apparently Maribel was recording the conversation. So when I said that she would get promoted if she, quote, stepped up and showed me what she's made of, she told HR that I was asking her to step into the bedroom. And she claimed that the reason she's getting written up was because she had refused any advances. I tried explaining that I, uh, no, that's not what I really meant. And I also let them know that Maribel and I were in a relationship before I was even promoted. But they had already asked Susie about that, and she told them that I denied we were dating when she asked me directly. Since we're now in a, uh, quote, he said, she said situation, they told me I would have to be suspended while they launched a full-blown investigation into Mirabelle's claims. Since they were coming to me late in the day, they gave Mirabelle the next day off, so that I could use it to finish up anything I needed before my temporary replacement stepped in, who they had decided would be Isaiah. They also told me that under no circumstances should I contact Mirabelle while the investigation was active. Oh, and here's a neat part I almost uh, left out. They also told me that they would need to investigate claims of my intolerance, See, apparently when Maribel said that she had rejected my advances, she also said that I responded with disparaging remarks about her Colombian heritage. So that's fun. Anyways, the next day was pretty much business per huge. Since HR had already told Isaiah what was happening and to keep it quiet, hush, hush, you know, uh, I was out of the office for my suspicion and all I really had to do was show him a few ropes. Since client relations are a big part of the job, he was pretty easy to teach. The only snag was his attitude. He wasn't too happy to hear that I've been with Mirabelle, given how little he cares for her. But he also has a very by-the-book kind of guy. So he also told me point-blank that he wasn't going to believe my side of the story until the investigation was proven. I respect his honesty, you know. But uh, it made for a pretty chilly atmosphere throughout the day. Things heated up quite a bit after work. I'd stayed up to clear my desk just to make room for Isaiah, so the parking lot was mostly empty when I got out. As I was walking to my car, I felt a sudden pain in my back, right there in the back of my head. As my face went rushing towards the ground, and when I turned over, two men in mask were kicking me on the side and on the head, and it's all just pretty blurry, but I think one of them was holding some kind of club. One, I was too weak to even try to get up, and the other, one just leaned over and held a box cutter right to my face. He told me to watch my back. At that point, I get scared uh, enough that adrenaline kicked in, and I tried to grab the box cutter while screaming for help. But he was stronger than me. So all I did was get my thumb sliced open, then he snatched it back and ran away. Thankfully, I didn't have to stay in the hospital overnight. I've got some stitches on my thumb, and the back of my head, and the rest is just bruises and a broken rib. But I'm in a lot of pain, and I didn't tell the cops this when I talked to them, but between the timing of it all, and the fact that they didn't even steal anything, I keep suspecting Mirabelle. I know, it sounds crazy paranoid, but is it really? They wouldn't release me until they were sure my concussion was gone. So maybe I just needed some rest. Maybe I'll think more clearly in the morning if... Thinking clearly is even possible right now, ugh, and I don't even know what's happening anymore. Update number three. Hey, it's been only a few days since my last update, but things are looking a lot brighter than, uh, you know, this time around. I'm still in extreme pain, but I'm a lot more optimistic. The first day after I got home from the hospital, I was lower than I'd ever been. I didn't even eat because the thought of getting out of bed was just too painful. I was hurting in places that I'm not even uh, sure anyone hit me in. But after a full day of moping, I started to get angry. Too many bad things have happened all at once, and I just didn't trust that it was all a coincidence. So I call up Isaiah to ask if he had heard anything that might uh, hint at whether Mirabel had anything to do with what happened to me in the parking lot. He didn't appreciate the call. He said the investigation is still ongoing, and he wasn't supposed to talk to me about it. 
Furthermore, he said that asking about Maribel was bordering on violations of the rule against talking to her directly. I asked if he had heard anything from anyone else, but he just tells me that no one in the office was likely to have my back right now. They all think that I'm suspicious. Uh, the way they see it, the worst case scenario is that Maribel was telling the truth, in which case they no longer respect me as a person. The best case scenario is that I still lied to them about our relationship for two years and continued seeing her after my promotion, in which case they no longer respect me as a boss. I mean, I get the point, but it was hard to hear it. But then, the next day, uh, Erica calls me after she gets from work and she said that the rumors have been circulating about the attack and that I called Isaiah to blame Mirabel for it. And then she tells me that she might know something and it turns out she actually knew a lot. The day HR came and spoke to me. Mirabel was having all those clients with Erica and she was apparently bragging that she was going to get me fired. When she wasn't at Erica's desk, she was messaging Erica from the company computer every time she came up with a new detail to tell her. You know, like uh, the bit about me being intolerant and Eric said it made her uncomfortable but that she didn't tell me because she didn't want to betray a friend. You know, she also figured that I would get through it anyway since I was innocent. Yeah. I have to say it takes a really sweet girl to be that naive about how the world works. But apparently, whenever Mirabelle had left Erica's desk to hit the break room, she had said each time that she had to go call her brothers. Because according to Erica, she laughed every time she said it, and when Erica heard about my attack, she started to get oh-so-suspicious. To explain why, I have to fill in some details I left out on when I first mentioned uh, meeting uh, Mirabelle's family. See, I never thought this would be relevant, but Mirabelle's brothers are kind of intimidating, I'd say. Her older brother, Felix, seems nice enough, but he also did some time for an armed robbery and has some kind of edge to him. You know, he's covered in prison tattoos, and he seems to have a pretty loose temper. Her younger brother, Juan, well, he's a cop, and he has very much came across the kind of guys who would get into the job for all the wrong reasons. And I know our memory can play tricks on us, but when Erica said that she thought they might have something to do with the attack, I kept thinking about the club that one of the guys was holding, and I'm more convinced than ever it was a police baton. Either way, Erica felt extremely guilty. She said that she'd supported me if my case with HR ever became a legal issue, even though she's worried about losing her job for staying silent initially, but I don't really want that to happen to her. I can't prove everything Erica told me, but I assured her that I would make sure she keeps her job if she helps me out with one little thing. I won't get into it uh, all yet until I'm sure, so you'll have to wait for it, but if I'm right about this, Mirabelle's not going to know what hit her. More to come soon. Updates number four. This is the final update of the story. Ah, hey guys, well, I'm back with another update, and this is probably it, but buckle your seatbelts because it's kind of a long one. I uh, kind of thought I would be making the update sooner, but I wanted to wait a week to see exactly how everything was playing out. Spoiler alert, I've got my job back. Well, first off, something I wound up realizing that the firm forgot to cancel my access to company accounts and softwares when I was suspended. This is extremely important because of how our monitoring software works. When an employee logs into the computer, we have software that screenshots their desktop every uh, 15 minutes. Not all of our work is done on the computer, so idle screens are fine. But it's more about making sure they aren't conducting personal business on company time. I didn't learn about this until my promotion, but apparently it's in the contract we all signed when we were working here. When Erica tells me that Mirabel had been messaging her all day before speaking to HR, I immediately went to check the screenshots and she had also been speaking to Erica in person. And the screenshots simply did not verify everything Erica said, but they at least gave me enough to prove that our relationship was consensual and that she was framing me to HR. So that just left the issue with her brothers, which was harder to prove. Although we have access to most company software from home, uh, for security reasons, you have to be in the office just to access the camera records. So I gave Erica my account info and had her do all of it while Isaiah was out for lunch. And she found a couple of helpful things. First, zooming in on the break room uh, camera clearly shows that Mirabelle called both Juan and Felix multiple times throughout the day, both before and after reporting me to HR. 
Our cameras don't have audio, so that doesn't prove much on its own, but one of the cameras outside was able to show that the attacker with the box cutter had a tattoo on the back of his neck. It was largely obscured between his mask and his shirt, but it seems to be the same one Felix has had, and it's a woman crying. It always stood out to me because the crying woman is smiling. I don't know much about prison ink, but I can't imagine this to be a common tattoo. So guys, once I had all that together, I contacted HR and told them that I had some important information about the investigation and that I would like to schedule a Zoom meeting to discuss it. So we set one up for the morning so that Susie could participate since she's still my direct superior and needs to be involved. They also wanted Isaiah involved since he's technically the one in my position now. I was supposed to get on at 10 a.m. that morning and wait for an invite, but I didn't do that. Instead, I got on 15 minutes early and sent them an invite myself. And when they joined, I told them to wait while I invited Susie and Isaiah. But I didn't exactly do that either. I did invite them, but I also sent room invites to every other computer in the office. Then, when they all started joining, I shared my screen and showed them everything. Maribel's message history, the camera footage I had Erica send me, I mean everything. The pictures alone did not prove the whole story, but when Erica admitted to her part in it, Mirabel lashed out and called her nothing more than a traitor. When she realized she had outed herself, she broke down crying and admitted to everything. Bada bing, bada boom, baby. That was enough to get my job back on the spot, but wait, there's more. When HR came to conduct meetings over Zoom, they pretty much always record them by outing her on the call instead of taking the footage to the police. I'd gotten a record confession, and since she'd done it on a company property, HR had no choice but to call the law. She was led out of the office in handcuffs under charges of criminal conspiracy while everybody watched. And I went back to work the next day. That would be the end of it, but like I said, I waited a week to update just to see how things played out, and Mirabelle's lawyering up, but she'll be waiting for a trial date for a while. See, we live in a pretty big city. And the courts are still not recovering from COVID. It's a backlog here, you know. She turned quickly into interrogation, so Felix and Juan have been arrested as well. Erica still intends to back me up in court. More importantly, she seems to have come out of her shell a lot. I think standing up to someone like Mirabelle showed her how strong she can really be. As for me, I'm getting a raise. I'm pretty sure it's the company's uh, way of just trying to keep me quiet about how quickly they suspended me without any evidence. Can't say I love the reasoning, but I'm not going to turn that one down. And as far as the rest of my coworkers are concerned, things are slowly getting better. Some of them still don't trust much after keeping my relationship secret for so long, but now they've seen what Maribel is capable of. I think most of them understand that keeping things quiet was never really my idea. Only Isaiah completely came around, but that doesn't surprise me. Yeah, he did say the only thing standing between me and his support was the truth. Well, he's got it now, buddy. Oh yeah, I joined a dating site. Ah, Tinder. I always used to think they were tacky, but I decided to give it a shot. Call me crazy, but I'm just not too keen on the idea of dating people from the office anymore. Ugh, I can't imagine why.